Thanks, Awe. Uh, I think we've come now to the point uh, that we can introduce uh, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands as she will be uh, appearing now for a talk. She does that in her uh, perspective as uh, the UN Secretary General's Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development, uh, as well as the Honorary Chair for the Dutch MoneyWise platform and the member of the Dutch Committee for Entrepreneurship. Uh, she's well fed into the whole area of fintech, of course, and we're very much looking forward to uh, to have her here uh, and make a speech. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Mr. King. So thank you very much for having me here. And uh, um, yeah, it's really a pleasure to join you virtually for the opening of this Amsterdam FinTech Week and to see innovators across the Netherlands, Europe and beyond coming together. As you just said, in my work as the UN Special Advocate for over a decade, I have really have seen tech-led innovations are really powerful engines to spur financial inclusion and improve financial health. Telecoms and other digital financial service providers have really helped previously unbanked and underbanked customers leapfrog brick and mortar banking across Africa and Asia to access financial services through their mobile phones or the nearest mom and pop store agent. Similarly, the innovators gathered here have a tremendous opportunity. Rethinking your business models could really transform the lives of customers in the Netherlands and throughout Europe, especially underserved segments such as small and medium-sized enterprises. This goes beyond simply making services more efficient. Your solutions, your investments, and the inclusive innovation ecosystem that you build together can really be a catalyst for change. That change can enable access to the quality financial services people need to protect themselves against hardships, invest in the futures, and better manage their financial lives. A more user-focused approach to design can really make services more intuitive for customers to learn, use, and gain confidence with their finances. We have already seen many fintech innovators build more accessible and affordable financial services that truly people need. Innovators like Funding Circle and Banking Circle are providing faster and cheaper access to capital using big data and AI analytics to rapidly transform credit ratings for SMEs and disperse instant loans. Fintechs like Factories are helping SMEs quickly turn unpaid invoices into cash flow through their innovative online platform. And intuitive app-based stockbrokers like Books are lowering the barriers to invest in capital markets, making it easier for people to start creating an investment portfolio. So, so far, we have only seen the tip of the iceberg of what is here possible. Here in the Netherlands, we have nearly universal access to basic financial services. However, gaps remain. This is particularly true for SME finance. For example, the Netherlands has the highest SME bank loan financing gap in the European single market at 22 of GDP. And according to the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business 2020 report, a worst performing indicator for enabling enterprises is getting credit. And the challenge appears to be growing. Over the last seven years, SME bank finances has declined by 16%. Small ticket loans, loans to female-owned SMEs, and working capital credit have been disproportionately impacted, adversely affecting smaller enterprises the most in these challenging times. The recent trend showing the emergence of many non-bank SME finance providers is thus very positive. This includes venture capital, crowdfunding platforms, fintechs focus on leasing or factoring solutions, and microfinance institutions giving really alternative options. Innovation has a key role in supporting non-bank players to increase competition, to increase outcomes, increase usability, and improve financial options for SMEs. To date, non-bank innovative solutions have mainly focused on filling the gap left by banks for short-term working capital needs for SMEs. From the recent success of credits in supporting small loans to SMEs, we can see that low-cost funding, guarantees and promotion, when provided strategically by the private and public sector together, not only are in great demand, 
they also make a difference in serving SMEs' financial needs. Going forward, it will be very important to develop more solutions to address SMEs' long-term financial needs, support their digitization, help them train their staff, and provide them with financial and business advisory support. So beyond loans, firm needs also equity financing to improve their solvency and to continue to invest in their businesses. So in order to have innovation in SMEs, we need innovation in finance. The pandemic has also reinforced the need to build up financial resilience and overall financial health in our population. As in most advanced economy, not all Dutch people were in a strong financial position before the crisis. According to Niebert in 2018, 38% of Dutch households have difficulty making ends meet. 36% have less than 5,000 euros in savings. And 31% lack enough money to replace two of the most valuable household possessions. Innovators can create tools to help people manage their day-to-day -day finances as well as nudge customers to save, compare different financial, financial options and budget their finances in the short term and the long term so they can really meet future goals. So it is clear that a lot needs to be done in this field. Now providers, advisors and investors can create industry standards and codes of conduct to make their practices more inclusive, responsible and safer. Fintech associations such as Holland Fintech can lead by providing a collective voice to regulators on policy changes to encourage innovation. Large companies can support the emergence of new solutions and startups. They can set up fintech hubs, venture funds and accelerators. Public and private institutions can also drive innovative research to better understand which approaches work and which do not. I'm really pleased that several institutions here are already starting to make some of these steps already. And while improving the regulatory environment is a crucial piece of the puzzle, it is the private sector which will create products that can expand financial inclusion and contribute to customers' financial health. More broadly, if we want inclusive fintech to thrive, there are necessary policies and pieces of infrastructure that need to be in place, what I like to call digital public goods. Some are critical for access, such as connectivity, physical infrastructure, good regulation, and digital IDs. Others make markets work better, for customers, of course, such as creating credit bureaus accessible for both bank and non-bank players, making payment systems interoperable, and ensuring fair competition. And some protect the financial system and its users, such as data privacy, cybersecurity, consumer protection, and digital and financial literacy. This last set is particularly critical to address new risks such as cyber attacks, over indebtedness, limited digital lit literacy, and algorithm bias. Issues relevant here in the Netherlands, but also across the world. I'm really eager to see what creative tools you can build together for advanced financial inclusion, but above all, promote the quality of these products, because by promoting the quality of the products, we can really gonna get the outcomes that we want, which is basically no financial stress for people and really opportunities for growth for SMEs. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Your Majesty, for this uh, wonderful talk. Um, I'm, uh, I'm really, um, uh, yeah, I'm really honored that uh, you were able to uh, to make this uh, conversation here, and I think it uh, aligns very nicely with I think the mission that we have with Amsterdam FinTech Week, as well as with uh, uh, the FinTech movement as a whole. So. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, for these insights uh, and supporting us here.